So I'm Ann Mayo and I teach in the biology and environmental sciences department. So my area is really in ecology and behavior and I ended up in my PhD work working on a particular ant species and that's they're called Pogonomyrmex comanche is the, the scientific name and they're called the comanche harvester ant. So these ants are fairly large thank goodness because most ants are tiny um, but I was looking at how do they forage and meaning where do they go to find food, what food do they bring back to the nest, how frequently. So I was looking at kind of behavioral stuff and also ecological uh, type concerns for that. Cordyceps is nasty. Cordyceps is a, is a fungus, so that's a genus, and there are many species, I'm not sure how many, but a lot. And these are parasitic fungi, or at least many of them are. And it turns out that they have um, a particular species of cordyceps um, that is specific for a particular arthropod. So it might not be an ant, it could be another kind of insect. Um, but they will attack that particular insect. So they get into the body and take it over and they use that to reproduce basically. They're gonna uh, go through their development and make spores which are like their seeds and then they're gonna release them um, once they have fully developed. So with the cordyceps is a kind of fungus and the fungi, they're not organized like animals and plants. They're very similar to animals in some ways, but their cells are kind of elongate cells and they actually will make more and more of those. That's how they grow. And they literally grow through their food. They get enough maturity, then they'll make their fruiting structure. So it's gonna have some kind of long filament and then it would make its spores and release those, hopefully to find another, in this case, arthropod, grasshopper or ant. The other aspect is the weird things some of these have those insects do in order that they're in the right place to develop and that their spores are in the right place to develop. Because all of that depends on things like temperature and humidity, how much moisture is there. Basic fungi, they're going through their food, but they're not doing anything to it. Often it's dead or dying or like hair, something that's not a living tissue. In this case, they're, they're growing through it like any fungus would do, but they're also thereby able to manipulate the behavior of these animals. So if we're watching the insect, inside stuff's going on, we might not see that. What we see is the ants doing something really weird. They should not be where they are. They would be in the canopy of the trees, not on the ground or they'd be coming up and they'll fall down back to the ground. This kind of thing, and you go, hmm, what's going on? And then later you see the filament come out and then you know it was infected by a fungus. You can think of it like cancer cells in our body. You know, it might be a liver cell, but it's not acting like a liver cell when it has cancer, right? So it's, it's genetics, it's whole physiology is all messed up. That's what's happening to these ants. So, so these ants, it's a little bit different. So they're gonna be zombie-like uh, shortly after they get infected. So um, the spores get attached to the body and they have a way, some kind of enzymes and just mechanical pressure that get into the, the exoskeleton, the hard armor they have. They get in and then they start growing. So at that point, they're becoming zombie-like. So within a few hours, maybe a day, the ant will um, begin to behave abnormally. And it turns out they've been mapping the genetics um, of that fungus against those species of arthropod. So often it's this fungus with this particular arthropod. It's species species specific. And what that means is that the fungus has evolved or developed very specifically to deal with this particular chemistry of this organism. What you can draw from that is those fungi are so specialized, they cannot, as they are, get into mammalian systems. So they're not gonna be able to deal with vertebrates because air chemistry is very, very different. That's not going to happen with this particular um, fungi. Okay, it's just there's too many differences and they're too specialized. However, there are fungi that we have problems with, right? There's diseases that are fungus like athlete's foot and yeast infections, right? Uh, thr thrush and stuff like that that we can get. And some of those can be pretty bad too, but they don't turn us into zombies. I will be a good biologist and say you never know. Here, probably not likely. If we were going to have a fungi, that would do that to us, that kind of zombie, it would have to be a whole different fungus that maybe already gets into our tissues. Now, whether it would do that or not, I don't think so. I'm very skeptical of that. We're dreaming if we think that's gonna happen. One of the kind of neat things is one, somebody had to look into the biology 
And then when we put that out there, a lot of the audience might go, well, I wonder if that's really true. Then they go look at it. You learn something about ants, you learn something about fungus, there's the entertainment value, and then potentially um, getting that out there to the general audience. And also, I would hope perhaps a few people might want to go, oh, I want to study those fungi. Science is by far more bizarre than these movies and books and games we put out there. So check out the real science. I mean, it's, it's, insects are wild. They're just wild. Fungi are just wild.